levelling process, the social levelling process that comprehensive education is inevitably bringing about, in that the kind of people who used to send their children to grammar schools and small private schools and all the rest of it, did that because they perceived it as giving their children an, a social and economic advantage which is now potentially threatened by the fact that their children go to the same school as other, as other peoples. And the opposition to, to comprehensive schools, therefore, in my view, is based very largely upon snobbery and upon a desire to preserve the class system. Corby, Northamptonshire. Modern Corby is a recession-hit boomtown. Here, in the 30s and 40s, open-cast mining and cheap fuel helped to create the biggest iron, steel and tube works in Europe. It attracted a large workforce from all over the United Kingdom to a rapidly expanding new town. Then came the 70s and recession, and ultimately the closure of the steelworks. Thousands lost their jobs, but although Corby is often described as an unemployment black spot, the rest of the country has caught up. Corby's unemployment problem now is merely average. Nearly 20% of its population have no jobs. On the edge of the town is Kingswood, a comprehensive school built in the mid-60s flush of educational enthusiasm. Except for the absence of uniform and corporal punishment, Kingswood has travelled down the middle of the comprehensive road ever since. Removed by mundane necessities from the national debate, the 56 teachers here have to serve the needs of a thousand pupils from the private and council estates of the town and from the surrounding villages. <coughs> Daneshome versus Cottingham. Daneshome is a housing estate in Corby, Cottingham a village four miles outside the town. Both are within Kingswood's catchment area. It's more like it, Nicky, on the left. Keep it up, son. Oh, oh, John, John, watch yourself. Many of these 11-year-old children will be starting their secondary education at Kingswood School in September. John, I want you to play deep, son. Come on. Too far. But before they go to the comprehensive, the comprehensive comes to them. In May, Graham Baldry, the head of Kingswood's lower school, visits the local junior schools to meet his prospective pupils. Cottingham. From here, ten children will come to Kingswood in September. I'd like to introduce Mr Baldry from Kingswood, the school where you're going to. And he would like to have a word with you about next term. Thank you, Mr Oakley. Thank you. I don't know if you want to bring your chairs. Can you sort of squeeze round and I'll sit on here and you come over here? OK? I should recognise you, shouldn't I? What's your surname? Warman. Warman. You got a brother? No, sister. sister. That's Tracy. right, Tracy. I thought as much. Who am I, really? Mr. Baldry. Right, you know that much. What else do you know about me, if anything? <laughs> That's right. Good lad. Um, good lass. Head of lower school. Um, which means what? <laughs> you don't know. Well, you're in my charge for the next two years when you come up to Kingswood. You most likely have gathered that much. Um, and what you're going to find is a bit different to what you are at the moment. I think you're in a super set up here. You've got ten of you. We're all in one little room. And there are what? 99 in the school? 96. Actually, 96, 96, is it? 96 in the school. And you come in now into a school of about a thousand. So you're going to get perhaps a bit lost to begin with and a bit worried and a bit panicky 
My cousin says when we get up there, they'll, they'll start D picking There you are. No, that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah. But they're doing that, aren't they, to frighten you? Yeah. Don't you think? And I bet you do it with that lot in there next year. Yeah. yeah. Like when they were up to, they are. Like when they were coming up to our class when Mr. Wall was in there, oh, wouldn't come up here, he's, he's terrible. That's right. Yeah. And, of course, today we've got the, the infants in, haven't we? And I wonder what those poor little things are being told by some of the older infants. <laughs> Graham Baldry also discusses each individual child with Cottingham's head, Jill Stembridge. So, boy, you are really, um, Darren, I'm really very worried about mm. how Darren will settle in. He has got a sister. That's right. He was asking some... I found this afternoon some good questions. Mm. Mm. Um, I think he knows what he wants. Yes. And, you know, he, he is perhaps looking forward to coming, yes. but he's still a bit concerned or anxious yes. to know what's going yes. on. But, um... He's, also, a, he's a, re a real non-conformist, is Darren. He seems that way. <laughs> I wouldn't say... No, scatterbrain, I was going to say, but he isn't, is he? No, he, he isn't. He uh, he's a very conform. serious boy, yeah. really. But he isn't sort of up to scratch as far as, you know, ability goes. And, and so he, that he has problems because he's, he's quite a mature boy in other ways. So mm. he likes to be with Ellis and Mark and Adam, who mm. are very bright. And so, of course, he realises He's working that. with one of the girls after that, wasn't he? Was he? Oh. Darren Wildman lives in Cottingham Village with his father, a railway track worker, his mother, two sisters and brother. He's a quiet boy. He's a, a boy who is nervous, but he, he's a boy who will take interest in anything. Well, he likes making things, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes to use his hands a lot. I mean, he, he, he's always down my down the garden. And uh, the other week there, it weren't nothing brilliant, but he made a, a box for putting it at the front uh, there for the milkman to put the bottles in and such like, you know. I mean, it wasn't brilliant, but he try, he's trying, like, you know. But uh, he's, he's at that age where he, he's... I don't think he knows, really. My generation, I think that uh, we done... We've got the best out of it. There was plenty of work and so forth. Now, for my children, when they leave school, the way the, the situation is, oh, I think they've got virtually nothing at the moment. And uh, I'm hoping that it'll change and when Darren and them leave school, there's something for them. But uh, at the moment, I can't see it. Not, not yet, anyway. Dane's Home Juniors. This is one of the two major feeder schools, sending 90 children every year to Kingswood. Graham Baldry needs a detailed analysis of each pupil from headmaster John Lord. Well, what I've tried to do, do next year. Graham, on this, you asked me to divide <coughs> our fourth year into six groups. That's right. And I've tried to keep a balance of um, girl boy ratios. Yes, that's super. That and um, um, try to give you mixability in each class. Right. So the complete sort of ability range is in it within each group. And We've tried to keep pairs together that do work well and can sort of develop from each other, but we've also made the necessary sort of social splits as, and we've, perhaps, normally as we've normally tried to do, and children we feel would be developed possibly away from their friends rather than if they're kept together in the same groups, if that's OK that's with you. That's fine. Right, on to the boys for this group, then. Nicholas, I think here that you've got um, potentially a real problem. He's a capable boy. And certainly at the opportunity class, they've brought on his academic work reasonably well. But I still think socially and emotionally there are a lot of problems. I think in the right setting, he'll do well. But he's going to need extremely careful handling. Since he's uh, been at the opportunity class and now, the family have since split. He's got problems always around him, yes. really. He must be placed, and he's the only one I would insist on, really, with a man-teacher strict no i think That's if he's placed in a teacher situation where it's disciplined in the sense of strict discipline control you'll be on a conflict course to disaster yeah, having said okay. all that he's a hard working boy when he does work he's a boy with a sense of humor and again in a one-to-one 
he's, he's a smashing kid to talk to. You've said he's bright. And yes, I've got, so, um, um, I've got uh, two of his books here. Thank you. Which I think show the, the academic side that's improved a lot, bearing in mind the fourth year. Right. Uh, sorry, the first yeah, that's year. That's a good place to open up, isn't it? Excellent work. And for a diagram, wow. Superb, superb drawer. Yeah, he's taken time and effort. Superb. And his handwriting is good, isn't mm. it? Yes, come on along. Yeah. It's one that we're going to have to... that you're warning me about, and we're going to have to, um... take time and care. An interesting <coughs> character, I might say. Very that. interesting indeed. Nicky Gray lives with his mother and sister on the Danes home estate. He was very close to his father. And since his father and I separated, he doesn't seem to take anything I say as really, I suppose I could say, an authoritative figure. You can't go up and love Nicky. He doesn't know how to cope with it. He'll walk away. See, with his father, he never used to cuddle him. They had a friendship relationship. They were very close, and... I mean, when he was tiny, he used to get cuddles, but a man, I don't think, cuddles a son as much as they do a daughter. And he used to... I don't know, go everywhere with John, and he, he doesn't go with me. And they're always so quick to condemn a child through its behaviour. If a kiddie went to school with a bruise, the teacher would be very quick to ask where the bruise come from, because it can be seen. And they would soon have the doctors around and the social workers and probably the kiddie taken away because it had done something wrong and its mother had smacked it. Because you can't see the marks on a child, they're naughty. And I think it's wrong. OK, and we're going in here. That's smashing. OK, <laughs> I'm going to stick around here. Right. 180 new children will arrive at Kingswood in September. Graham Baldry must see and be seen by as many as possible. <laughs> And you've got no worries about coming to us, have you? Oh, what a face. <laughs> you don't want to come up? Why not? <laughs> what are you scared about? I don't know, just down. What's your brother been telling you? Um, he enjoys it. He said it's going to do mm. it up there. I think you will when you tell me. <laughs> he hasn't been telling any funny tales or anything, has he? No, he's seen, he's seen everything up there. He's mm. seen rugby teams That's and right. football teams and everything. What's he going to do this term? Um, I don't know, really. You don't know? Never asked him. No. Do you do any sports? No. Um, I like swimming. You like swimming? Are you taking part on the swimming gala? Yeah. You are? I hope to, Oh, yes. that's good. Now, that's when in, what did you say? In? About three, three weeks' time. Three weeks' time. Three weeks, yeah. I think, oh. yes. And we all, we just do races and things like that. It's smashing, isn't it? Do you have any... In Kirsten Watson. Do you have any races? She already has a brother at Kingswood. Her parents, a lecturer and a teacher, are having a new house built on the outskirts of the town. It's a virtue, or a vice, depending on your viewpoint, that were it not for the comprehensive system, it's unlikely that Darren, Nicky and Kirsten would be going to the same school. It worries us a little bit, but you can't avoid it. I mean, they're going to school to learn about Apparently. life, and, and you, you mix with all sorts outside anyway. I think they ought to mix in school. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which Earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for our time. Accept these gifts, O Lord, as a token of our love. I think she's bright and she's chatty. I'm not particularly worried. I think she'll I think she'll be able to cope okay.
we hope she'll do quite well at school, but I don't... She's obviously not the brightest, but I think she'll make her way. In junior school, she hasn't had many, if any, problems. I don't really, think she's had any, she? no. She's, she's, uh... Tends to join in everything. Seems to get mm. on with her friends and all the other children very well. She's been part of a lot of the clubs at school. Mm. Um, she likes drama. Um, both in the club and out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably see she, more out there. She, she can be rather dramatic. <laughs> During the summer term, all the prospective pupils visit Kingswood. Later on, they'll come each week for preparatory classes, but their first lesson is on the geography of a large comprehensive school, which they'll have to attend for at least the next five years. Right, just follow me then. Straight ahead. Just pause a moment beyond those swing doors. Now, what do you think this room is? Have a guess. Can't you tell? Come on, hands up. You tell me, yes? It's a library, yes, of course it is. As the children size up the school, so the school starts to size up the children. Keith Smith is the head of the remedial or individual learning department. He's tested all prospective pupils for literacy and numeracy. Some 23 children, including Darren Wildman, will be needing his particular skills next year. Graham Baldry uses this information, along with the junior school head's confidential reports and his own impressions, to sort the children into seven forms, each form of mixed ability and background, each one a miniature comprehensive. He can then report to Kingswood's head, Brian Tyler. Keith reckons on, it put me right if I'm wrong, he reckons on nine minus. Nine minus, so he's going to have 23? 23, that's what he reckons on in the remedial department. Um, it works out about three... On average, four in a form. Four, six, is 24. And have you done it like that? I've done that, yes. So you've got about four in each form? Except for one form, um, which is 1S, and there's only one in that form. But there's lots of social problems uh -huh. there. Mm -hmm. So I had a word with Keith about that, and we decided to leave it. Mm -hmm. is, that, is, is, that, is that the right thing to do? What? Put your social problems in with the inside. Scarcely noted for tact and diplomacy, I don't, well, is he? Well, I don't know. It, it's surprising. I think he's matured a lot as a form tutor. Mm. Was anybody brilliant or anything? Um, brilliant, brilliant. Not a very, very high flyer. No. I wouldn't say so from what the heads have said this year. We've got a good, um, average set of children with hardly any problems, they say. Parents, too, visit the school. Darren, Nicky and Kirsten will all be in the same form, 1M. This is the first chance the parents have to talk to the form tutor, Andrew Mills. He's expected to go home and rather than just go out and play football it, yeah. or whatever, he'll yeah. be uh, having to step down, settle himself down and discipline himself into doing some reading or some writing, yes. which is perhaps something he's not used to. It's a chance, too, for the school to talk to the parents. Some of you, it might be a continuing partnership. Or it might be the start of a new partnership between you, us, and your child. Nikki Gray's mother wasn't able to attend the parents' evening.
September comes all too soon. Tomorrow will be the first day of term. Oops. Kirsten, Nikki and Darren may share the same apprehensions, but their parents all have different demands and expectations. I would like to, her to achieve as much as possible academically. If uh, it proves that she's capable of it, I would certainly like her to get her GCO levels and obviously A levels uh, if she's able. We personally hope that Kirsten and her brother will sort of look towards probably further or higher education, mm. primarily because of the opportunities that will open up later and also because of the situation in town where children will obviously find it very, very difficult over the next possibly five, maybe even eight years to find employment which will stand them in good stead in the long term mm. where they can get a really um, good training of any description. Nikki's mother has a shorter term demand. Is there any more Christmas? Personally, I hope to start with that he gets a good teacher and not a student teacher. No 18, 19 year old child should have to or be able to teach young kids. That, along with a lot of strong discipline from the teacher, one that he can respect. Pass me a comic, please. And don't read too long. I will. No. Night. Night. Darren's parents have a practical problem for Kingswood to solve. Educational-wise, you know, it, with his reading, that, that's the main thing. That's what I want them to really put right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's definitely, it's, it's, well, he's got to do it, hasn't he? Mm. He doesn't seem to sit and concentrate with his reading. Mm. And he gets upset if you turn around and tell him to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win with him. <laughs> I'm hoping that his nerves don't let him down, really. Mm. Just hoping that he keeps his pecker up, as they say. Monday morning. The first day of comprehensive <coughs> secondary education. I meet him at the evening when we, um, oh no, that was Guy's. Oh, Mr. Shepherd. Oh, Mr. Shepherd, wasn't it? No, I haven't met Mr. Miller then. But did you do when you went, Guy? Just went in, into oh. the playground yeah. and then they called different whose class it was. Just told you to go in. Hmm? Just told you to go in. Did they say Mr. Mill's class or Mr. Shepherd's class or Mr. Shepherd? Do you feel about nerves? 
<laughs> you'll be all right when you get in the car. Just a bit. Yeah. Have you got your bag downstairs ready? Yeah. She'll be all right when she sees all her friends from school, from junior school. I'll see you tomorrow, Mom. You should do it, don't. You don't have to. You can just have hamburger or a hot dog. You can. You can. Mr. Baldry, 
Okay. So, Mr. Tyler wants a word with you, please. As Mr. Baldry told you, my name is Brian Tyler, and I'm the headmaster. Although, from your point of view, Mr. Bolgey will be your boss during your first two years in the school, and he's the one with Miss Richardson who will look after you. But it's my job this morning to welcome you to the school. And most of you, don't forget, are going to be with us for a long time. We're going to work together for five years, six years, seven years. And there are some people in the school who are beginning their eighth year here today. Now, I hope very much you're going to enjoy all that time. And I know we're all looking forward to working with you over all that time. And of course, what we want you to do while you're here is to enjoy yourselves and to do your best. Now, I'll make you a promise. Mr. Baldry and me and Miss Richardson and all the staff, all the time you're here, will try to treat you as we would want to be treated ourselves. We'll try to do that. And we expect in return that you'll do that for everybody else. Or you'll try to. Obviously, we won't always get it right. You won't always get it right. But if you remember anything I've said to you during all the time you're here, and I should no doubt be saying a few other things, that's the one I want you to remember and to try towards. Because that's what the school's about. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Tyler. Are these people are in 1M? Mr. Mills, for William Aitchison, Simon Ackroyd, Charles Best, Grant Chapman, Nicholas Gray, Ian McHugh, Roderick McKenzie, Paul Muir. Can you sit down, please, until I've read out the whole form? Ellis Veazey, Darren Wildman, and Mark Wright. Esther Stembridge, Claire Simon, Kirsten Watson, Lorraine Whiting. Will you stand up quietly and go with Mr. Mills, please? <laughs> okay, come in. Just sit down anywhere for now, it doesn't matter where you sit. My name's Mr Mills, <coughs> and I'll be your form tutor, which means that um, this is the place you come to, this room, every morning, OK? Right, Nicholas Gray, please. Nicholas Gray. Hello, Nicholas. Is that how you spell your name, Nicholas? Yeah. Are you sure? 20th of the 7th, 70. Dresden. Close. OK, Nicholas. Ian Q. Kirsten Watson. Is that the right way of saying it? Kirsten Watson. Kirsten. Is that how you spell it, Kirsten? Yes. And you were born on the 6th of February, yes. 1970. And you are dressed at Grimsby Close. Yes? Right, thank you, Kirsten. Thank you very much. Now, where do you come from? Bancroft Road, Cossingham. And your birthday? That's the same birthday as me. 23rd of October? Yeah. Yeah, same as me. 23rd, 10th. It's amazing, isn't it? Do you know which uh, star sign that is? Scorpio. Yeah, that's right. It's just on between Scorpio and the one before, isn't yeah. it? 23rd of 1069, Bancroft Road. Is that all right? Yeah. 
Thanks. Thank you, uh, Darren. Mark Wright. Andrew Mills is their form tutor, but also their English teacher, and English will be their first lesson. Stick led the way along the bottom of the cliff to where there had lately been a landslide and quite a large chunk of, of cliff top has come down in one piece. Between the Within a few classes, days, Darren will take English lessons in the individual learning department. But today, despite his reading difficulties, he must survive in the class. And animals with. Stick began to dig at lumps of clay with his fingers, and Barney found another big clay mine and did the same. Where are we? Not. An arrowhead. Two paragraphs from the end. Two paragraphs from the end, an arrowhead. Barney grasped for me. Oh, thank you, Stig. I I'll really must be must go now. He felt he knew the way there better than anywhere else in the wood. And he in the felt world, yes. Oh, it doesn't matter, Carol. It was like drawing pictures. Once you've put a chimney and window on the house. As the children come to terms with the school, Andrew Mills must begin to come to terms with the children. As class 1M, they will be a major responsibility for the next year. They seem more self-confident than other first years I've had. More lively, in a sense, in a positive way, they asked more questions than the first years and the first day normally would. They're usually too frightened and nervous to put their hands up, and, but they were full of questions all morning, right from the word go. children, it's the end of their first day. For Andrew Mills, it's a time to assess the comprehensive variety of demands, expectations and problems with which the comprehensive teacher is faced. Immediately you can spot two or three children who look a little bit dicey. And there, was a, there was a boy who, who, who was writing on his desk at 10 o'clock, you know, 40 minutes after he'd arrived at his new school. 
which I, I've never seen anything equivalent to that before. You've written your name. Go and get a paper towel and wet it and rub that so hard it comes off. You're not allowed to write on desks. Did anyone else think they could write on the desk? Have you been writing on the desk? No. Well, you're not allowed to. What's your name? Nicky. Nicky Gray. Yeah. He was one who, um, on the desk. Nicholas Gray, so, who was the other one who put his hand up along with the one who was writing on his desk when I asked him if they thought that was a good thing to do. He thought it was all right to do that, write on your desk. Well, I'm, su I'm surprised that he sat in front of a teacher. That, that, that amazes me because he doesn't look to me to be a boy who's going to want to be under the teacher's eye very much. So looking for attention as well at, at the same time as, 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 as being a bit antagonistic, he's going to be a bit, a bit of a problem, I think, but it's just, I mean, you know, it's just intuition. This is a little dark girl that was sitting here. She um, seemed to me to be pretty attentive and um, I would have thought well motivated. Yeah. yeah. She was at the front of the class, of course. And um, cool. looking cool. towards me all the time, like this, mm. and listening. And uh, I wouldn't like to try and guess at her sort of ability yet, but um, certainly she's going to be a trier anyway. I think. Well, I was interested in sport. You know what was going on there, don't you? <laughs> did you enjoy it there, did you? Yeah. Good. What's your first impressions of um, Kingswood? What's the first thing that struck, that struck you about it when you came here? Well, I, I couldn't... Uh, there were one or two things he said, which... He was a, he was a slow reader. Yeah. Um, he's obviously going to have problems with his English. Um, when I was talking to him this morning, however, he struck me as a boy who's pretty well aware. And he was talking about the staffing situation at his junior school. And he showed a sort of level of political awareness about who was deputy head and who'd left and why they'd left and this kind of thing, which was unusual in a kid of that age. And I thought, well, here's, he seemed like a good gossip and a boy who, who would be aware of what's going on, a pretty well aware sort of child, but not in the formal academic way, perhaps, because just going on his English reading, you know, I think he might be one of these children who's got a natural awareness and wit, but perhaps not yet the, the, the academic thing, the formal side of it. Just, just you know how I feel mm -hmm. moment. We have an elite society, very platonic, really. The gold at the top, people and the iron, uh, people at the bottom and the silver in the middle, and that's how a lot of people like it. And comprehensive education ultimately threatens that elitist concept of society. And that is why people invent, you know, all the, the myth about the decline of standards, which anybody who walks in any school will see is, in fact, really rubbish.